Let's go! Ryan Nielsen. Is this the guy that's going to fix LSU's defense with zero defensive coordinator experience? Well, there's an asterisk to that. But that's who everyone is saying Ed Orgeron is after for the most critical coaching position on this staff. Is this the right move if LSU decides to go in this direction? I'm going to give you what I like. I'm going to give you what I don't like. But there's also a report that my number one candidate is finally being considered. Okay? And we'll get to that at the end of the video. So let's start with what do we know about Ryan Nielsen. Well, he is currently the New Orleans Saints defensive line coach where he took over that position in 2017. Now, ironically, he took over for Bill Johnson, who was LSU's defensive coordinator, who, defensive coordinator, defensive line coach, who was not retained, but is kind of being retained right now. It's kind of weird. But Bill Johnson was replaced by Ryan Nielsen in 2017, and he very well could be replaced by Ryan Nielsen right now. Obviously, Nielsen's expertise is coaching the defensive line. That is what he's done for 99.9% .9 of his career, and he's done so at an extremely high level. Now, as many of you know, I'm not a big resume guy. If you're good, you're good no matter where you come from. I just love looking at resumes such as this one from Ryan Nielsen. He was a defensive tackle at USC, it was a really good one at that. Free agent for the Philadelphia Eagles. Didn't really last that long and immediately got into coaching. And as you can see here, it wasn't all dandelions. I mean, these are some brutal stops. Idaho, then an SEC job under Ed Orgeron in his second year coaching. Now, why did he get that job? Well, he played under Ed Orgeron at USC and he was hired by Ed Orgeron at Ole Miss. Now, when Ryan Nielsen was at Ole Miss at this time, he was pretty freaking good. Remember Greg Hardy? Yeah, and then Marcus Tillman, who was a three-star recruit. But then when Ed Orgeron wasn't retained, Ryan Nielsen, Central Connecticut State, Tennessee Martin, Northern Illinois. So it took him five-ish years to get back into the Power Five, where he spent... Quite a few years at NC State until he was hired by the Saints. And at NC State, he was a Broyles Award semifinalist, which goes to the nation's best assistant coach. Steve Sarkeesian won the award this year and the year before. Joe Brady won the award. So as you can see, his resume is pretty daggum good, especially if the Saints replaced a respected guy like Bill Johnson with a defensive line coach from NC State. Now, I looked at all of Ryan Nielsen's interviews when he was at NC State, and I listened to all of his interviews with New Orleans Saints reporters, and this is an extremely bright guy. Very technical, understands the intricacies of defensive line play, and that's something that I like because, well, I was a defensive lineman in high school, an undersized one at that, so the technical aspect was the only way I could stay on the field. And a lot of what Ryan Nielsen preaches is very good defensive line technique. And you look at some of the defensive linemen he's had at the New Orleans Saints. Cam Jordan was great before him, but look at all these other guys he developed, like a Trey Hendrickson, like an undrafted guy like Shy Tuttle. Marcus Davenport and Sheldon Rankins didn't start their career so hot, but have drastically gotten better. He's been very good. He's been knocked down, gotten back up, and yeah, he's made all these stops, but he's still relatively young. He's only 41 years of age. It's not the easiest position to coach, okay? The position is always drastically changing, but I'm not so sure this is the right move. Let's get into why. What's this scheme going to be? You know, I would rather, and, you know, once again, I'm biased towards defensive linemen, but 
I would rather a secondary or a linebackers coach become the defensive coordinator with zero defensive coordinator experience. Now, remember earlier I said there was an asterisk. One year, he was the co-defensive coordinator at Northern Illinois for one year, and that is the co-defensive coordinator. Now, remember, co, okay, we're going to get to that in a moment. We don't know what his coverage philosophy would be. Is he a cover two guy? Is he a cover three guy? Does he like to play two safeties back, or does he like to play single high? It's interesting because the way the Saints defense runs now is probably what Ed Orgeron envisions his defense to be. Four defensive linemen who are very aggressive and a secondary that can cover a lot of space. However, if Ryan Nielsen's going to try to implement what the Saints do defensively, I'm not so sure that's going to work at the college level. And let's be honest, the Bo Pelini hire was the worst hire LSU's ever made as an assistant coach. So this time, Ed Orgeron putting his neck out for Ryan Nielsen, this is a make or break hire, and it does reek of doing a favor for a friend. Now look, Ryan Nielsen has been rumored for other NFL jobs, and there's a reason for it. As we pointed out, super talented guy. Now look, I think it's cool that we have this crossover with Saints and LSU because, you know, I'm a Saints and LSU fan. A lot of you are as well. But this isn't about cool. This is about doing the right thing. So if you do hire Ryan Nielsen, I would be very shocked if he was just named the defensive coordinator. He would obviously be the defensive line coach and a co-defensive coordinator. But I think what LSU is going to do is name Ryan Nielsen the co-defensive coordinator with Corey Raymond. That seems to make the most sense. You promote Corey Raymond, who's been with you for over a decade, and like Ryan Nielsen, has been the best coach at his position group for a few years now. So that would make a lot of sense. That would make you more comfortable. That would make me more comfortable. But then you still don't have any defensive coordinator experience. Now, I know on the offensive side, Jake Peets and DJ Mangus don't have much offensive coordinator experience. The difference, though, with those two guys is that their jobs have been diagramming plays and formations. Jake Peets' job has been a quarterback's coach. A lot of QB coaches eventually become offensive coordinators. This is a natural progression for them in their careers. We don't know if... Corey Raymond has ever really drawn up a play or has thought about calling a play. And the same thing is true for Ryan Nielsen. So the fit and the comparisons between the two of them aren't really the same. The timing of this is not great at all. So the way it works in the NFL, you are not allowed to interview a candidate if he is still coaching in the NFL. Well, Ryan Nielsen is still coaching in the NFL playoffs. Are they going to be Tampa Bay on Sunday? I don't know. If you're a diehard LSU fan, you would hope that would be no. I know it sounds weird, but you want to get the ball rolling on this as fast as it possibly can. Because Ryan Nielsen is not able to be officially interviewed. Now, there could be some backroom discussions with Orgeron and Nielsen. We don't know. More than likely, if this were going to be the case, that those discussions have happened. But there is still the opportunity that Ryan Nielsen gets a bigger NFL job, which is highly unlikely as well. Let's say the Saints win on Sunday, and let's say the Saints actually go to the Super Bowl, which obviously I would love, but that becomes a big issue for LSU because then you won't have any defensive coordinator a month down the road. Ed Orgeron might have, you know, a strong handshake deal. Look, Ryan Nielsen owes a lot of his career, if not 99% of it, to Ed Orgeron for coaching him up so well at USC and then giving him his first Power 5 opportunity at Ole Miss. So, you know, Ryan Nielsen is obviously forever indebted to this guy. So, you know, an Orgeron-Nielsen Peering, if Nielsen says, yes, I'm coming, he's more than likely going to come.
So we don't know scheme. We don't know when this hire would actually happen. But let's talk about something even deeper when it comes to football philosophy. So the New Orleans Saints are a very aggressive defensive line, but they're also, uh, and this is going to sound weird, a very thick defensive line. They're good at being aggressive, but they're also good at stalemating the line of scrimmage, which means they're able to penetrate and make good plays in the backfield, but also really good at stopping the run and not getting gashed. And that's pretty impressive that Ryan Nielsen has coached that group up to being that good against both. The problem is that college football in particular has become a sport where you need to stop the pass first. And when you have four defensive linemen, well, that's one less fast guy on the field to defend the pass. I was the most vocal about Bo Pelini being a bad hire. Now, eventually, I became Optimus LSU fan, but in my heart of hearts, when the hire happened, I hated it. But is Bo Pelini so bad of a defensive coach to have given up seven yards per play in eight of LSU's 10 games this year? Now, for reference, seven yards per play, there were only, I think, four or five defenses total that gave up seven yards per play averaged over the year, okay? So LSU's defense wasn't just historically bad. They were historically bad in eight of the ten games that they played. Now, we could talk about personnel, and yes, it sucks when you lost all those players, but those numbers are beyond laughably bad. So I've been thinking, is this... Was Bo Pelini so freaking bad to the point where he couldn't call plays at all and the defense was consistently confused? I don't think he is that bad of a play caller. I don't think anyone is that bad of a play caller when you have LSU's type of athletes and such bad statistics. So let's do some simple math here. When you have four defensive linemen on the field, you're obviously running a four-man front. Remember, college football has become a sport where the quarterbacks and the receivers are smarter than they've ever been. They are so good at pre-snap knowing where each player is going to be. So, pre-snap, if you line up in a four-man front every single time, guess what the quarterback knows? There's only seven fast guys out there to defend the pass. Whereas with a three-man front and a Caleb on chase on off the edge, there's potentially eight guys that could drop back into coverage. Now, of course, you have zone blitzes and whatnot, but look at LSU's defensive line personnel last year. None of those guys are really all that nimble outside of B.J. Ojolari. Now, that doesn't mean they're not athletic, but they're not the types of players that you have to worry about in coverage. So I'm starting to think that maybe the four-man traditional front is a little bit outdated. The problem with having four defensive linemen down and playing a lot of single high, whether that was Todd Harris or Mo Hampton, is that that leaves so many open pockets of space on the field that you can manipulate. So, unless your pass rush was sacking the quarterback at an extremely high speed, well, you know, you were going to get picked apart. LSU's defense was doomed from the start. So, I know this is getting technical, and there's so many different coverage schemes we could talk about. Oh, do you run cover two or cover one or three Buzz Mabel or whatever? You know, we could talk all the all that stuff. Did it not seem that LSU had an abnormal amount of wide open receivers running down the field? And look, there were even games where LSU's pass rush was getting home and they were still getting picked apart by the other team's offense. And when you run a four-man front and your defensive linemen are as aggressive as LSU's were, well, that opens up huge pockets of space for the quarterbacks to scramble. LSU was gashed by both Ole Miss 
and Auburn simply because Bo Nix and Matt Corral were decent runners. I mean, we're not talking you, like Trevor Lawrence level athletes. We're talking about decent runners. So all those things, you know, I I just think that LSU needs a complete overhaul philosophically, and maybe Ryan Nielsen is that thing, but these are just ideas of me talking out loud. So take that for what it's worth. So like with Bo Pelini, even if I don't feel on fire about any certain coach, I'm still going to cheer him on. I'm still going to hope for the best. Alrighty, so let's go a little deeper. So the person who did the the, the first big Ryan Nielsen report is Glenn Gilbo. So Glenn also pointed out that Glenn Schumann is also a name that's being floated around. Now, Glenn is really well connected with LSU sports, and obviously Glenn Schumann is my number one defensive coordinator candidate for LSU after the Marcus Freeman thing didn't happen. Now, look, I, I, I really wanted Marcus Freeman. I really think he's that special. This would have been a historic hire for LSU. But look, it didn't happen. Now, whatever happened, happened. So that's in the past. Glenn Schumann's my number two candidate. And I think there's some other guys out there that LSU could could consider, like a Joseph Gillespie. But still, this is the first someone has reported that Glenn Schumann's name has been floated around LSU circles. The only problem is Glenn Schumann is the co-defensive coordinator at Georgia. If you hire him, you'd have to make him the defensive coordinator. And I'm totally fine letting Glenn Schumann be the defensive coordinator. Very Arandian in his mannerisms. He's not an overly fiery guy. Uh, He's just very sharp. And we've seen Georgia's defenses over the years. You know, I was talking about pace per play. Georgia is a little bit more pro style. So, you know, there is a gap there. Uh, but I think Glenn Schumann would be able to adjust. He's obviously a defensive coordinator on the ascent. I don't think it would cost you a ridiculous fortune to get a Glenn Schumann. I think LSU should go for it. I really do. Obviously, Kirby's going to want to keep him around. Uh, you know, George, LSU's not really Georgia's rival, but they are an SEC team you'd have to beat to get to the playoff. So, yeah, I mean, if the Schumann things happen, the Schumann things happen. If the Schumann things happen, I would love if the Schumann thing. If the Schumann thing happens, I would absolutely love it. I would love for him to get an interview. But up to this point, it looks as if this is Ryan Nielsen's job. If there is a Vegas board out there, Ryan Nielsen would probably be minus three hundred to get this job at this point. The coaching ties are there, the relationships are there, the proximity's there. Uh, The price is right. All those things. But then all those other things we talked about in the video. So let's have a discussion in the comment section below. It is Power Hour LSU. Boom! So let me, uh, for those that stayed till the end, someone uh, commented that they don't like the let's go and the boom. Because it's too loud and they watch with headphones. So let me know what you think. You know, normally I just talk normal. I don't want to hurt anyone's ears. But, you know, I got to come in with the energy, baby. You know, like, you know, Stuart Scott talked normal most of the time, but he would give you a booyah. You know, you got to throw him in there, baby. Got to keep you on your toes, baby. Anyway, I have got a, oh, I have got a chicken wing to go eat. Just one. Just one chicken wing. 